Hello and welcome to our MaxQDA video tutorial. This time we'll take a closer look at a visual tool called the Code Relations Browser. The Code Relations Browser is basically a code by code table that shows us which codes overlap or are close to each other and how often this is the case. This tool is especially useful in the early stages of developing a theory, for consolidating your code system and for testing hypotheses. And besides that, it's also quite neat to illustrate your findings in a presentation with the Code Relations Browser. I start by activating the documents I want to use as a basis for my visualization. Then I activate the codes that I want to see as my rows. You'll see how that works in a second. Now I select the entry Code Relations Browser in the Visual Tools section of the menu. A window pops up and shows me several options. First I have to decide upon the codes that will be displayed as rows. I can either visualize all the codes or just the ones I've activated, which is what I'm going to do right now. The second part deals with the columns. Besides the options to visualize all codes or just the ones I've previously activated, I also have the option to directly choose one or more top-level codes, which is what I want to do, so I'll go with that. After this, I have to decide which kind of code relationship I want to analyze. The first option visualizes only codes that overlap, meaning that the two codes have been assigned to the same data segment. The second option will also take codes into account that are only near to each other, but don't overlap. Since we can also change this setting directly in the Code Relations Browser, I'll go with the default setting of co-occurrence of codes. The last part of the option window deals with the documents I want to take into account. First, I have to decide whether I want to include all my documents or only those I've previously activated. I'll go with that. Secondly, I can decide whether any overlap of codes will only be counted once per document. I'll talk about that later, so for now we are fine. OK. Now I can choose which codes to display as columns. I want to include the code people, so I'll check that. If you have a long list of codes, you can sort them alphabetically by clicking here. I click on OK again and the Code Relation browser opens up. So, what do we see here? On the left side we see the code day-to-day -day issues that I've activated beforehand. And at the top is the top-level code people I chose just a second ago, with all of its subcodes like friends and parents. If I have a lot of codes, or some with rather long names, then I can adjust the column width manually or by clicking on those blue buttons over here. Whenever two codes overlap, a square appears. The square is bigger or smaller depending on the number of overlaps. Now I can see, for example, that the code recreation and the code friends overlap rather often. Since I find this information rather interesting, I want to take a look at the actual overlaps. To do this, I double click on the square. Now all the coded segments where the code recreation and the code friends overlap are shown in the retrieved segments window down here. I can also view not only all the overlaps of two codes, but all of the overlaps from the entire code relations browser. To do this, I simply click on the quote matrix button right here and I'll get an Excel file where all the overlaps are listed. As you can see, there is a comment underneath each overlap that tells us which document and which paragraph this quote came from. Now, as you might remember, we had the option while creating this table to not only take actual overlaps into account, but also those occurrences where two codes are just near to each other. Clicking on this button over here gives me the option to switch to that mode. So I click, enter the proximity I want to take into account, and there we are, much more overlaps now, naturally. I can also choose to display the overlaps as circles or as numbers. Collapsing a parent code aggregates the number of all the overlaps that this codes and all of its subcodes have. And by clicking on the sum symbol, I can see the sum of overlaps any code has. For the next option, let's imagine a scenario where I want to see in how many documents we find this overlap of friends and recreation. Obviously, this number we have here doesn't tell us that, 
because it could be very well the case that we have one document where many overlaps occur and some where there are none at all. To resolve this is actually very simple. We just have to activate the count hits per document only once option that we also saw while creating the code relations browser. Now it doesn't matter how often an overlap occurred in a document because it will be only counted once. So we see now that it occurs in two of the activated seven documents. We can also further reduce this view to only show us whether an overlap in a code or one of his subcodes occurred at all by activating the binarize option right here. To further process your data, you might want to export it. To do so, click on the export button and choose a file format.